Not too long ago, I released a video onto my YouTube channel explaining why I chose to study SEMA over studying for the ACA or the ACCA alternatives. But today, I'm going to be taking that one step further. I'm going to be conducting a full analysis on each of the three qualifications. If you are looking to study towards SEMA, ACCA and ACA, then I'm sure about which one to go. And I can assure you, you're not in this alone. And that is why I believe it's important for you to educate yourself fully to ensure that you can make that correct qualification decision. So without further ado, we are just going to roll the intro and then we're gonna get stuck straight in. So let's go. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Craigo. I'm a fully qualified chartered management accountant and you're here for the 4K, but you're gonna stick around for the accounting. Today we are going to be running through the full analysis on the SEMA, ACCA and ACA qualifications so that I can help you to determine which qualification is right for you. And on screen now I have time stamped the agenda for today's video. I've also added the YouTube card feature onto this video so please do feel free to flick around in this video to the bits of the video that interest you. Step number one in this video is to review the syllabus. What you can see from the SEMA syllabus is that their SEMA syllabus is made up of four levels. The certificate, the operational, the management, and the strategic level. Within each of the three main levels, the operational, the management, and strategic level, you will have the E, the F, and the P pillar. So the E pillar is all the theoretical, organizational behavior, becoming a manager, that kind of content. The F pillar will be financial reporting, and the P pillar is management accounting and risk management. You will have a, an exam at each level, and at the end of each level, you will also have a case study. It's important to note with the SEMA syllabus, you will be specializing your education within kind of organizational behavior, financial reporting, and management accounting. And that's because management accounting is for those that work in industry and run in a business. And therefore, these are kind of the three core skills that you will need to build in order to hold your ground within a financial department. If we now go on to ACA, you will see that ACA is made up of only three levels, the certificate level, the professional level, and the advanced level. Those students will be studying ACA will be the students that are working at the top accountancy firms. These firms will offer financial services such as assurance, audit, tax services. And that's why within the ACA qualification, we see more specific modules to the financial services field, such as assurance, audit, law, taxation. And therefore, they will need to understand how to provide a service rather than running of the business that you will see with the SEMA exam. It's so just to conclude, when you're looking at ACA versus SEMA, you can see that it is a more specific qualification to the financial services industry versus the SEMA qualification, which is more about general business and running a business from a financial perspective. And then we look at ACCA, and ACCA is an alternative to ACA. The ACCA qualification is again aimed at people within financial services businesses rather than if you want to be a management accountant in an industry business. And you will see that the syllabus is very similar to the ACA syllabus. You will see that there are three levels, applied knowledge, applied skills, and the strategic professional. In the strategic professional exam, you will see that you will have two mandatory exams and then you will have four optional exams. And from the four optional exams, you will need to pick two to make up the remainder of the strategic professional level. So if we just take a look at the ACCA syllabus, you will see that in the applied knowledge pillar, there is exams in accounting and business, management accounting and financial accounting. And that is all very similar to the SEMA certificate level and the operational level exams that you have within SEMA. And what I would say very similar to what you've got in ACA as well. In the applied business skills area, you will see some exams very similar to ACA and also elements of the SEMA syllabus as well. So you'll see that you've got corporate and business law, performance management, taxation, financial reporting, audit and assurance, and financial management. Most people who will study for an ACCA exam will be working in practice and therefore will need to have knowledge of the services and the financial services that those businesses provide, which is why audit taxation and law are within the ACCA syllabus. And then at the strategic professional level, there are two mandatory exams, as I touched on earlier. That is strategic business leader and strategic business reporting. And then you will have the option to pick two out of the four exams. 
and that is advanced financial management, advanced performance management, advanced taxation, or an advanced audit and assurance. The final point as well for me is to take a look at qualifications, understand which qualifications and subjects you would like to study more and which ones you would find more enjoyable. I would probably say that 60 to 70% of the qualifications will be very similar. And then they're just the kind of modules that I've touched on earlier in this video that will differ. And ultimately, that's where you need to decide which one is for you. So we've now run through the syllabus. I appreciate that was quite meaty. We're now going to go on to the pass rates. So number one is to look at the pass rates themselves. And you can see that ACCA pass rates are extremely low. Whoa, look at those ACCA pass rates. ACA pass rates are extremely high and SEMA kind of sits slap bang in the middle. I think the pass rates are extremely useful for anyone studying. And to be perfectly honest, if it was me, ACCA pass rates would be putting me off right now. And I get it, if you were to judge what qualification to go down based on the pass rate, which ones are gonna be easier? You're going to go with the ACA exams. But what I would say to that is edge on the side of caution here. Remember that the students sitting the ACA exams are likely to be working for the businesses such as KPMG, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, PricewaterhouseCoopers, the top accountancy firms where they attract the best students. These students have pressure that if they don't fail their exams, they may get sacked. So they are 100% putting the effort in. And I think this is reflective within the pass marks. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to go with ACA, where the pass rate is extremely high, ACCA, which is going to be very challenging, but very rewarding, or SEMA, which is slap bang in the middle. And trust me, they're achievable exams, but they do require hard work, just like all three qualifications. I'm gonna make this one short, sweet, and to the point. If you want to be a financial accountant, then you will need to study for ACA or ACCA. If you want to be a management accountant, then I recommend you study towards your SEMA qualification. A financial accountant is someone that works in practice at a financial services firm, such as KPMG, Deloitte, Ernst & Young. A management accountant is an accountant that will help run the business from a financial department. So for example, if you were in the finance department at Apple and you were helping them to run their business, then you would be considered a management accountant. So you need to decide what route you want your career to go down. And then I would recommend supplementing that career with a choice of accountancy qualification that will help you progress in that career. So we're now going to go on to the element of signing off of accounts. But a SEMA qualified accountant who holds a practicing certificate, they can sign off a business's account that have a revenue up to 5.6 million pound. Whereas an ACA or an ACCA qualified accountant can sign off any business regardless of its revenue. If having the ability to sign off accounts is something that you need, then I thoroughly recommend you avoid studying the SEMA route and you go down the ACA or the ACCA route. And the next point is to look at the flexibility of exams. For me, this was a massive reason I chose SEMA. With SEMA, you have the flexibility to book and schedule your exams up to 48 hours in advance any day throughout the year. The case study is slightly different. You do only have four windows throughout the year to sit either of the three case studies. However, by large, the reason I chose SEMA was because of the flexibility of studying the exams. And in industry, this was important because unlike practice, we do not get week after week of study leave to go and sit our exams. The ACA and the ACCA exams all require an exam sitting window throughout the year. You will be required to sit maybe two or three exams within any given exam window. And that is where when you work in practice, the firm will give you the study leave off, the time to go to college and the study leave for you to revise for such an intense period of time. And again, my recommendation is think about which, which business it is you're working for, think about the time commitments of that particular business, and then think about whether you will want a more flexible exam process or you are happy to go ahead with a less flexible exam process. And then my final tip is to consider what your employee wants you to study. When I joined my employer, they wanted me to study SEMA because I was working in a finance department of an industry company 
where it would be useful for me to study the SEMA syllabus. Likewise, a company like Ernst & Young, Deloitte, the big four accountancy firms, will probably want you to study ACA. That is the recognized accountancy qualification among the top four accountancy firms. Think about what business you're working for and think about the qualification that will complement their business. Because at the end of the day, if they're paying for your qualification, then you need to make sure it's effective for them as well as possible. So that is my six factors which I believe you need to consider when choosing to study for SEMA, ACCA or ACA. I thoroughly hope it has added some value and it has helped you make that decision. But that is all from me today. Please feel free to leave any comments down below. I love answering your comments and your questions because I get great pride in helping others. That is all from me today. I look forward to the next one. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.